All right, take three. Hello. So I was working on a track uh, over the weekend and I've noticed something weird happening with the pyramid and let me just sort of clean it up. Nice trick. Uh, use a paintbrush or any kind of brush, make a brush will work uh, as a way to dust off your synth. Uh, if you're into hardware equipment just like me, uh, you'll notice that uh, dust can get into various little weird places and this is a really all right, so I was actually working on a new track uh, over the weekend and I've noticed that the uh, pyramid is actually acting a little bit weird and I'll show you what I mean. Um, so let me just uh, turn it off and on. All right, so what I think is happening is that there's uh, dust or something oxidized in the contacts on the pad and the pads are actually registering multiple time or they're bouncing or something like that because what I've noticed is the following. Let's switch to a track. Uh, I'll just go into step mode and play a chord. So I'll record a chord here and stamp it over there so we can see it here and what happens is when I touch the key, well of course it's not going to do it now. So what I usually do is I grab these and I try to make contacts. There it is, it just happened. So I touched it and instead of uh, changing that entire chord, it actually deleted the chord and added a single note there, which is definitely not what I wanted to do. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up this guy, uh, clean it up, uh, use some uh, deoxid to deoxidize the uh, contacts and hopefully that will solve the problem. Okay, so let's turn it off and I'll unplug the pyramid, take it on the bench, take it apart and see what's going on with the contacts. Here we go. So what we're going to need is a couple of tools, uh, but also make sure that you have a soft surface so that when we put the pyramid upside down, you're not going to scratch or bend the encoders. Uh, in my case, we're going to use uh, grass, obviously. So um, we have this little tool over here, uh, I'm going to use this to remove the caps from the encoder. Uh, I don't know the name. Uh, we have a uh, M2 size uh, X um, thingy, and then we have a uh, Phillips screwdriver. So that should be all we need for those. The Phillips screwdriver is for the uh, screws on the inside of the pyramid. All right, so let's get started. So first I'm going to remove the encoders. Uh, in my case I have custom encoder, custom caps on the encoders. Now we can flip the pyramid over and start taking the screws out. Alright, so this is a bit of a problem because uh, the standoffs are 5mm and I actually looked and I don't have a five millimeter wrench, I have five points. So, plan B is gonna be this instead, and we're just gonna manually take them off, and be very careful, do not touch any traces, things like that, or if you're not like me, you're gonna have the correct uh, hex wrench, and it's gonna be fine. So let me just loosen them up a bit. Be sort of doing anything with that. So now we can flip the unit over, and remove it, and there we go. Okay, so now we can go on actually cleaning this thing. So, this is the little... So first I'm gonna dust off the board. So just gently dust everything off. There's actually quite a bit of dust, so... And then the next step is gonna be to uh, clean the contacts. Uh, I'm using deoxids. Uh, there's various brands for this thing, but basically this will take off the oxidations uh, on the contacts. Uh, and rather than spraying this thing directly onto the board, I'm going to put a little bit in here and then use, use a Q-tip to clean out the contacts. All right, so the board is nice and clean. So the next step is actually to clean the contacts on the uh, the rubber pads, and this we're going to use uh, soap and water. All right, so we have soap and water and a little toothbrush, and now we just gotta, now we can gently soak and wash the little rubber parts. 
And the added bonus is... All right, let me uh, rinse this off, uh, dry everything, and then we can uh, assemble and test it. Okay, so now let's uh, put everything back together. All right, so. And I should little rubber nuts go into the holes. Then we put the cover back on. Make sure that all the pads are correctly in place. Back on, so I'm just gonna put one. Better put one at each corner and make sure that none of the pads have slipped through, like here. All the buttons seem to be fine. Of course, we'll only know when we put everything together. Okay, so now we need to put the cover back on. Which goes like this. Voila, shiny new clean parent. So let's put it back there and uh, make sure that it uh, still works. All right, so let's just plug it in and see if everything works. Actually, I feel that the buttons are much more responsive. So let's go uh, see the test I was doing earlier is to go to step mode and then snap a cord and put it over here and go into display mode. And what do I have here? And Yes. All nice. Perfect. All right, so um, that's it for today. Uh, we should actually make some music now. Um, so thank you and bye-bye.